Come on, everybody just say praise him. Come on, say praise him. Come on and say praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Right where you are. Right where you are. Call his name like you mean it, say. trajectory of the rest of your year and I believe that I'm talking to thousands of overcomers thousands of overcomers you have been through hell and high water but you made it to this point and there is a reason why you made it I don't want you to think that this was an accident you are not here today on this first day of 2021 because you got lucky you're not here because God felt sorry for you. You're here because you're tough. You're here because you are a survivor. And I've got one other reason why I believe that you're here, and I think it's going to be the substratum of what we talk about today. I want you to go to Exodus chapter 2. Exodus chapter 2. We've got three passages of Scripture. And let me tell you today, I know normally our sermons about um, 15, 20 minutes online, and, and that's, uh, that's fine. But we didn't get all the way here today to rush it. I have a word for you today, and I need you to stay focused. I've got three passages of Scripture because I want you to know this message is so important that Moses wrote about it in Exodus. The Hebrew writer wrote about it in Hebrews, and Paul also wrote about it in the book of Acts. And anytime you have three writers who lived at three different times, who never met each other, who God inspired to write about the same thing, you better pay attention to it. Yeah. Exodus chapter number 2, verse number 11. The Bible says, And it came to pass in those days when Moses was grown. Now, I want you to hear that. When Moses was grown, that he went out unto his brethren and looked on their burdens. And he spied on an Egyptian, smiting a Hebrew, one of his brethren. And he looked this way and he looked that way. And when he saw that there was no man, he slew the Egyptian and hid him in the sand. And when he went out the second day, behold, two men 
of the Hebrews strove together and he said to him, and this is the one who started the fight, he says, why did you smite him? And he said, who made you a prince and a judge over us? He says, aren't you the one that just killed the Egyptian the other day? And Moses was scared and said, surely I've been found out. This thing is known. Now when Pharaoh heard this, he sought to slay Moses. But Moses fled from the face of Pharaoh and dwelt in the land of Midian and sat down by the well. Stay with me, y'all. Go to Hebrews 11. Hebrews chapter number 11. If you got this, say yes. Hebrews 11. Now I want you to go down to verse 24. When you look at verse 24, here's what the Bible says. It says, by faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused, listen, to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. That, I, I hope y'all getting this. I hope you're getting this. Now let's go over to Acts chapter 7. Let's go to Acts chapter 7. I, one verse in verse 23, and we're done. Acts 7, verse 23. And when he was a full 40 years old, it came into his heart to visit his brethren from the children of Israel. So here's what you have. In Exodus, you have Moses telling his own story <laughs> about how he looks out the window and he saw two Hebrews fighting and he got involved in that and he saw um, another Egyptian treated another Hebrew wrong. Uh, so that was racism even back then. Sounds like 2020. So, so he's got that going on. And then the Hebrews are fighting the Hebrews. So that sounds like black on black crime, Hebrew on Hebrew crime. Same thing that's going on today. Because I'm trying to show you that Moses had his own 2020 and he still made it. I'm, I'm trying to show you that this isn't the first 2020. It's the first 2020, but it ain't the first 2020. You see, it's, it's, the, it's the first time it's been 2020, but it ain't the first time there's been a year like this. Right? And so Moses sees that. But Moses, because you know when you tell your own story, you, you leave some, some of the details out because you don't think they're pertinent. So then we go over uh, to uh, Exodus, and then we leave there, and we go to Hebrews, and the Bible says that by faith he did it. And then we go over, and Paul gives us the specificity. He says, not only did Moses do it, because Moses said when he had come to four years, but Moses said this happened when he was about 40. Something happens when you get older. When you get too old for stuff, a full 40. You know, it's some, you take some stuff at 25, but by the time you get 35, 36, 40 years old, so I'll be 40 in July. I'm, I'm right where Moses was. I understand them. But, but here's what I want to talk about. Moses, this is what it says in the first in the first watch, Exodus chapter number two. I want you to get this. I promise you this is it. Exodus chapter two, verse number 11. And it came to pass in those days when Moses was fully grown. I want to talk on this subject today, and I hope everybody at home can say it. Just look at everybody in your house and repeat after me. I'm grown. That's, that's what I want to talk about today. Just tell everybody in your house, tweet, text everybody you know, and just let them know, if you want to know why I'm acting different this year, it's because I'm grown. If you want to know why I'm not taking what I used to take, it's because I'm grown. If you want to know why I understand things on a different level and perceive them, it's not because I'm arrogant. It's because I'm grown. Everybody just said at home, I'm grown. Grown. Put it in the comments. I know I'm any grown people out there. This is for the grown people. This message ain't for kids. This is for the grown people in the room. I, I'm grown. I'm grown. You know, I guess the question would be, uh, how does one know when they are grown? Because <laughs> some of you all have children who think they're grown. 
They act grown. They, they maneuver and move like they're grown. And I grew up in an old school house um, where there was one very basic definition for being grown. It was made very clear to us that you're not grown just because you turned 18 or 21. We, we, we were grown, according to our mother, when you could take care of yourself. That, that's really the working definition of being grown is when you can pay your own bills. Uh, adulthood has nothing to do with the matriculation of age, has nothing to do with how old you are, because there are people uh, who are twice your age uh, but don't have half the responsibilities that you have. But being grown is not uh, because you can get in a club at a certain age. Uh, being grown is not because you can go to uh, the rental car place and, and finally you've reached the age where you can get the car without uh, somebody helping you. Being grown is the result of surviving stuff. You know, time makes you grown. Be, being grown is the result of, of making it through things. When, when time has had its way with you and you keep bouncing back and uh, when you've had issues and circumstances, you see, time, what you survive, what you've been through, the evolution of your mentality, see, all of these things contribute to the work and definition of what it means to be a grown man or a grown woman. I, I, I like what I like. I go where I go. And, and if you don't like it, it doesn't matter because I paid for it. You know, I... I I dress how I want to dress, and if you don't like it, then dress how you want to dress. But, but I'm grown, and I've earned the right to do it. Uh, you can drive what you want to drive, live where you want to live. Why? Not because you need somebody's opinion, but, but when, you, when, when people see your life at this stage, they don't understand that they may uh, be envious of what you have today, but they missed all of the moments, weeks, years, that you didn't have a fraction of what you have today. And since you made it this far, you work. 40, 50 hours a week, take care of all of your children, make sure that you are doing the things of God and you're praying and fasting. There are some things that only come by fasting and praying, and when God blesses, you don't have to explain nothing to nobody. Just tell them I'm grown. I'm grown in the spirit. I'm grown in the physical sense. I've, I've evolved. I, 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 listen, I'm grown because I know what to take serious. I, I know what to take serious. I know who to take serious. I know how to react and not overreact. See, all of these things uh, are the differentiations between uh, childhood and adulthood. And I think this is what Paul meant in 1 Corinthians when he said, when I was a child, I spake as a child. I thought as a child and I understood as a child, but now that I become a man, I put away childish things. I think Paul is saying that the difference between adulthood and childhood is how I speak, how I think, and what I understand. And, 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 and I believe that I'm talking to some people uh, who, uh, who are growing uh, in your spirit and, and you understand uh, that a part of that growth is, is not only choosing what you want, watch this, but also choosing who you decide to be in relationship with. That, that just because we grew up together don't mean we're going together. And just because I knew you back then doesn't mean you're qualified for my next then uh, because there are some things that I refuse to take into 2021 that I took in 2020. Um, and, and so I'm not talking to people who are getting older. I'm talking about people who are growing. I, I'm not talking about people who had another birthday. But I'm talking about people who had another evolution. I'm not talking about a person who got into the 30s club or the 40s club or, or the 50s club or the 60s club. No, I'm talking about people, irregardless of age, you know what and who to prioritize. Am I talking to somebody there? Listen to me. That, that you know where going forward you are going to put your energy. That, that you know whose calls you're going to answer and whose calls you're going to block. 
And you're not going to feel bad about it because you've, you've allowed them to talk your ear off. You've given them tons of advice. They haven't followed any of it, and they're right where you left them. So you know what? You tell them up front. See, when you're grown, you say stuff like, listen, don't call me asking me for advice. Just ask me how I'm doing. I'm going to ask you how you're doing because you're not going to do what I say anyway. I'm too grown for that. Somebody just type in and say, I'm too grown for that. You see, because 2020, all 365 days of it, all 8,760 hours of it, all 525,600 minutes of it, all 31,536,000 seconds of it, uh, this was a heck of a year. This was a heck of a year, and if you made it, uh, it was an unusual year. It, it was a year uh, uh, that, that happened so quickly, yet it took so long. Um, it was a year of public dismay. Uh, we lost some of the best actors and game show hosts in this year. We, uh, we had a disease that was once in a century, uh, if not once in a lifetime. We had uh, more civil unrest. We had white against black. We had rich against poor, uh, uh, liberals against conservatives. Uh, uh, you had northerners versus southerners. You, you, you've got all of this conflict that's happening all around us. We've had storms that we never saw before, and, and, and we had food insecurity, food lines that were as long as the 30s during the Great Depression. This year has dealt us a blow, and, and that's just the public stuff. That's just the stuff that we know about. That's just the stuff that made the headlines. But I want to talk to the people who say, yeah, Rev, Reverend COVID was, was difficult and, 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 and financially it was hard, and, 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 and staying in a house with people 24 hours a day, seven days a week, that was difficult. That was just the stuff you knew about, but, but like the song psalmist said, like Kafir said, her father's dealing with cancer. See, there's some stuff that happened in your life that didn't make the news. That, there was the public stuff that we all had to deal with, but some of you all on top of your public had some private stuff that didn't make Fox didn't make CNN. Uh, Rachel Maddow did not talk about it on MSNBC. That was some private stuff that you had to steal away in your closet and pray about. <clears throat> there, there, are some, there are some things that nobody knew <clears throat> about that you were struggling with. There were some things that you were going through that you could not articulate. There were some struggles, some strains, and some stresses that you were dealing with, that nobody knew about it. And I wanted to tell you this, that even though it was difficult and even though it was hard, can I tell you that at the time of our text, Moses was having the same kind of year that you are. Moses was going through the same thing. His, his then was like you are now, and it actually looked like 2020 because, first of all, the Egyptians were enslaving the Hebrews. That, that, was, that was racism going on in that day just like it is today. We cannot act like racism started when African Americans came to the shores of America from Africa. If you read the text, I want you to know racism predates the New Testament. It, it predates the A.D. Uh, calendar. It, there was racism going on right here. And, and not only that, there was classism and there was sexism. And if you think Chicago has issues with black-on-black -black crime and you think that Houston has issues with it and, and if you think that, that Florida has issues with Latino-on-Latino Latino crime and you can go all over the world and see people of the same races and ethnicities fighting one another, the same thing was happening here in the text when Moses looks out of the window and and sees Hebrews fighting one another. There was crime going on. There was social injustice going on. There was economic injustice. Can you see that, that even archaeologists are still today finding the gold and the treasure that the Egyptians left behind and yet 
you had the Hebrews living with the Egyptians in the same city, in the same town, in the same state, in the same country, but they were waiting on the master to feed them when he thought that they needed and they were waiting on Pharaoh to give them water. How do I know? Because when they came out and they were waiting on the manna to come from the sky and the water to come from the ground or the rock or from the sky, one of the Hebrews says to the, to the uh, uh, others and says, you know what, at, at least when we were back with Pharaoh, we had food to eat and water to drink. So that means that Pharaoh rationed out the food to them so there was economic injustice and food insecurity. And can you hear what the Hebrews are saying about the Egyptians and what the Egyptians are saying about the Hebrews? Can you hear the Hebrews saying, you know what, these Egyptians are, are elitist, these Egyptians are, are hateful, these Egyptians are racist, and can you hear the Egyptians saying, oh, you Hebrews ought to be grateful for what we're giving you, you're so ungrateful, you, you ought to be glad that we're feeding you. Can you hear the, the, the racist language going back and forth? And then Acts chapter 7 says that Moses witnesses all of that, and he witnesses at 5 years old, he witnesses it at 10, he witnesses this at 20, but, but when he got around 40, when he got when he got to be a full-grown man, once, once he had looked at it for so long, Moses decided at the age of 40, there's some stuff that I took in my 20s that I'm not taking in my 40s. He says there's some stuff that I saw in my 30s that I don't want to see in my 40s. There were some things, here it is, so that it can make sense where you are. There are some things that I saw and ignored in this stage that I'm going to say something about in this stage, I'm, I'm going to help somebody, and I'm not in a hurry. I need you to pay attention to me right now. I know your covers are tucked up all the way to your neck, and you got the remote. I want you to turn the volume up from 17 to about 35. I know you're going to wake somebody up. I know you're trying to watch this on the low so you don't wake up the house, but I want you to wake up everybody because if everybody in your house ain't growing, then you need to make sure that this word permeates throughout the atmosphere of your house because it's time for some of us to do what Moses did in this stage. Watch what he says. At 40 years old, here it is, point number one, Moses says, I refuse to any longer be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. I, I refuse. I refuse. And, and let me tell you, I, I'm, I'm grown now, Amari, and I'm, I'll be 40 in a couple months. And the first thing I found out that I'm going to do at this stage of my life is some stuff I'm going to refuse. Yeah, that, that's some stuff I'm not taking anymore. Am I talking to somebody out there? I, I'm, that, watch this. He says, I refuse to be called Pharaoh's, the son of Pharaoh's daughter. In other words, watch this. Moses says, you ain't going to call me this year what you called me last year. You ain't going to talk to me this year the way you talked to me last year. I'm not going to respond to you this year like I responded to you last year. He says, I will no longer be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Do you know what that means? Do you understand the ramifications of the words that just came out of his mouth? I'm not going to be Pharaoh's daughter's son. Do you understand that this is the woman? who found you in the reeds and your mother had abandoned you for sake of fear and this is the woman who brought you in the house and this is the woman who clothed you this is the woman that fed you and Josephus said that Pharaoh had no other children and that Pharaoh's daughter had no other children which means Moses that if Pharaoh dies, you are actually going to be next in line to be the next Pharaoh of Egypt. Hold on. Be careful. Make sure that you are not being ostentatious. Make sure that you are not being erratic. Be careful. Don't break this thing off yet. Are you sure you don't want to just stay? You sure you don't want to just be there? You sure you don't just want to stay there for the sake of peace? Moses says, I cannot stay in this house another longer. I will no longer be called the son of Pharaoh's 
daughter, I don't care what's next. I don't care who's next in line. I don't care about the benefits. I don't care about the pension plan. I don't care what kind of uh, uh, house we have. I don't care what kind of car we drive. I don't care how much money is in the bank. I am a Hebrew, and I have a destiny. And what, what Paul says, he says that Paul says that Moses would rather struggle with the Hebrews than to succeed with the Egyptians. And every once in a while, you got to make a decision of whether you're going to struggle or succeed. You got to decide whether you're going to struggle or succeed. And sometimes we don't refuse things because we're afraid of the struggle. Sometimes we don't refuse things because we're afraid of what people are going to say. Sometimes we don't refuse things because we're afraid of what's going to be in the headlines. Moses says, I no longer want to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. I don't care how much gold I'm leaving behind. I don't care what kind of pyramid you are going to give to me as an heirloom. I don't care what's going on. I don't care if we know each other. He said, Thank you for the education. Thank you for being nice. Thank you for the Dolce and Gabbana. Thank you for the for the for the shoes. Thank you for the clothes. Thank you for the Louis Vuitton belt. Thank you for all that you gave me. Thank you that the bottom of my shoes were red. But I'm getting ready to take these shoes off. You can have the belts. You can have the watch. You can have the ring. You can have the crown. I'm going to where I am called because I am no longer going to be associated with this facade. When you get grown. You get tired of fake stuff. He says, I ain't, I ain't no Egyptian. I was a Hebrew when you found me. I'm not an Egyptian. I was a Hebrew when you clothed me. I'm not an Egyptian. I was a Hebrew when you tried to change my name. And now at 40 years old, I'm ready to get back to what I was. And I don't know who I'm talking to today, but I'm talking to at least 2,000 people who say in 2021, I ain't doing the facade. In 2021, I ain't doing the fake. In 2021, I'm not tiptoeing and walking on eggshells. He says, I am tired of faking it. And listen, there has to be a time in your life where you refuse to answer to what they used to call you. Moses says, I ain't, I ain't, I am not a Hebrew. I am a Jew. I am a Hebrew, and in this 40th year of my life, or in this 21st year of the 20th century, somebody has to decide that you're no longer going to pretend. I don't care what the benefit is, that you're no longer going to pretend. I don't care who pays your rent, that you're no longer going to pretend. I don't care how many bags you got for Christmas, you're done pretending. I don't care what kind of gift you got to be. I want you to decide that it is time for you to be grown and stop putting up with the facade and be what God created you to be. I dare you to just type it. It's time for me to be. It's time for me to be. I don't know what comes after you'll be, but it's time for you to be. It's time for you to be rich on your own. It's time for you to be peaceful. It's time for you to be happy. It's time for you to be calm. It's time for you to be happy. I don't know whatever's coming after you'll be, but somebody type, it's time for me to be. Moses says, he says, I got 40 and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm grown. He said, I'm, I'm not faking no more. I'm, I don't care how big this house is. I refuse to walk in it unhappy. He says, I don't, I don't, care, I don't care that I'm famous. I, I don't care that all of y'all know me. I don't care that, that, that you think that I'm Pharaoh's uh, grandson. I really ain't. I mean, I'm here, and I, I thank God for the grace, but my season in this space is over. Oh, somebody ought to put that right there, that my season. In the, I don't care about the benefit. My season was up. I don't care what it looked like. My season was up. Somebody type, my season in this space is up. Can I say something to you? Listen to me. Moses walked out of a palatial pad. Moses walked out of a place that most people would have looked at him and said, you crazy. You have lost your mind. Just sit still and be happy. Don't rock the boat. Don't trouble the water. Just take it. Moses said, I ain't taking it. I'm going to make it. He said, I'm not going to take it. I'm going to make it. And, he, and watch this. This is what Moses showed me. Are you, are you, if you going to write some down, you better write this down. We reveal who we are, not by what we receive, but by what we refuse. You, you can't tell me who you are because of what you receive. You show me who you are by what you refuse. You see, if, if I dropped $1,000 on this stage right now and somebody saw it and picked it up and brought it to you 
and you received it, knowing it's mine, that would show me what kind of person you are. I, would, I wouldn't judge you, though, because everybody's found a 20 on, on the ground and picked it up and put it in their pocket. Everybody's found a $100 bill somewhere and picked it up and put it in your pocket. That's because you didn't know whose it was. But, but the analogy was, if I dropped it and you knew whose it was and somebody brought it to you and you refused it, not because you didn't need it, but because you knew who it belonged to, then you have just made way for God to give you 5000 that's always and absolutely yours. What I'm trying to say is that you can show me and you can show God not by what you're willing to receive, but why, by what you are willing to refuse. You can't be the friend of, an, of my enemy and still be my friend. If you got to be my friend, you have to show me what friendships you can refuse. Somebody going to get this in this place today because if you go into 2021 trying to make everybody happy, receiving everything, and you're, you're friends of these people and friends of those people. And if you're a friend of everybody, you're loyal to none. Some stuff you got to refuse. I don't want your conversation. I don't want your money. I don't want your notoriety. I don't need your phone number because I'm in a sea Season of refusal. Somebody say I'm in a season of refusal. I want you to understand that you are defined by what you refuse. If you don't believe me, go back to Daniel chapter 3. And, and, and we don't know about the Hebrew boys because of how much money they had. We don't know about the Hebrew boys because of who their mothers and fathers were. We don't know about the Hebrew boys because they graduated college summa cum laude. We know about the Hebrew boys because they refused to bow. Because you show me what you refuse, and I'll show you who you are. We know about Daniel because he refused the king's meat. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. He, he, we, we know about Daniel because he refused to die at the hands of angry lions. We know about Joseph because when he finally got to the place of prominence, he refused to get revenge on his brothers and say, what you meant for evil, God is going to make it for your good. We know about David initially, not because he was anointed with oil only, but because when Saul fell asleep and he had a knife in his hand, he refused to kill him. And Psalms 105 says, touch not my anointed and do my prophet no harm. You are defined by what you refuse. I want you to figure out what you're going to refuse in 2021. What, what, somebody said, I got a list. I need you to and check it twice and find out who's been naughty or nice. I want you to find out what you're going to refuse. I refuse to take a job in 2021 that's going to make me work on Sundays. I, I refuse to be arguing with people in traffic about who cut me off. I refuse to, 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 to dumb down my intelligence so that somebody can understand me. I refuse to eradicate my worth just so I can have company. Somebody talk to me. I refuse. I refuse to have certain conversations to appease people. Somebody shout, I'm on refusal. I don't know who this word is for, but I know it's for somebody. Somebody say, I refuse. I refuse. I refuse to make the same mistakes in 2021 that I made in 2020. He says, he says listen, I'm on refusal, but, but what, what caused this refusal is what got me. The Bible says that he was an eyewitness to a crime, that he looked out and he saw an Egyptian slave master beating an Israelite. He, he saw an Egyptian slave master Beating an Israelite. See, this is how you know you're grown when you know what to respond to. See, let me put it this way. When you're younger and you're young-minded, the things that make you angry is when somebody does something to you. But when you get grown, you start saying stuff like, you can say whatever you want to say about me, but mess with my child. See, that's how, that's how you know you're growing. See, when, when you're, when you're young-minded, young mind, you, you'll fight over anything anybody says to you. I was, I was going to get something to eat uh, yesterday, and I'm pulling into the parking spot, and, and a lady who was on the other side tried to hurry up and get in. Now, I had a decision to make. I had a decision to make. 
And, and the decision I made was different than the one I would have made a few years ago. I politely pulled in the parking spot, and then I saw her wait on me to get out of the car. And I had to talk to myself. And I talked to myself in the car, and I said, self, myself said, hmm, I said, we're going to get out of this car, and we're going to be fine. And I got out, and she said, really? And like the Christian I am, I said, really, and kept walking. I could, that could have ended different. Just, but see, when you get older, you recognize she can be upset. She was in the wrong. I'll never see her again. Ain't no sense of using my energy to cuss her out or have her cuss me out or engage. I just let it go, kept on going. But, but when you get older, you start saying stuff like you can say whatever you want to me, but, but mess, mess with Caitlin. And I will forget that I went to seminary. And I will forget that I preached the gospel. I promise you that if you mess with my child, the response that I give you, you will say these words. He is not a man of God. And, and that's just the truth. But, but I'm in good company because when Moses saw this Egyptian beating this Israelite, <laughs> the Bible says that he went out and he looked left and he looked right. And everybody know that when you look around, what you're about to do ain't right. Come on now. Come on, come on. You got to help me. When Moses came out and he decided what he was going to do, he said, and everybody watching me, I don't care what language you speak, everybody know what that look means. When you start looking around, that is an admission that you know that whatever you're about to do ain't right. So I fit right in with Moses. Moses started looking around. The Bible says that when he looked around, he went out there and he killed the man. Not only did he kill him, he must have had anger issues. Then he went and buried him in the sand. And that's how you know you're grown, when you start burying what you killed. You see, the problem is, is a lot of us let things in our life die, but we never bury them. And so every time we walk around, we're reminded about it. Come on, help me, y'all. We, we kill it. Uh, or, or, or we put it in a coma, but we show it on barrier because we have intentions on visiting again. But when you're growing, you don't just kill it. You get it out of your sight. You bury it. Here it is. When you're really done, you delete the number. When you're really done, you don't go that way anymore. When you're really done, you don't mess around in that area anymore. When you're really done, you walk away. You bury it. You lock the house. You throw away the key. I am asking you in 2021, if you want peace, you're going to have to learn to bury some stuff. You're going to have to dig some shallow graves for some of the attitudes and some of the feelings of rejection and insecurity that the enemy has planted in your life. And when you're going to the next level and you know you really grown, there are some things you got to bury. You got to bury. He, he went out there and, and he buried that man underneath the sand. And, and Moses did that. But, but, but here's the, the next thing that showed me something. And watch this. So, so he sees these two individuals fighting uh, these two Hebrews, and, and he goes out there and he says, man, I mean, it, it, ain't, if, it, it ain't bad enough that they're killing us, but, but, but we're going to kill each other? He said, man, y'all need to stop. He told the man who started the fight, he said, you need to stop. And, and the dude looked at him with an attitude and said, man, man who are you talking to? Who made you the prince over us? And, and here it is. This is how I know this is how I know he grown. And, and he says, aren't you the guy, since you're trying to stop this fight, aren't you the same guy that, uh, that, that killed the Egyptian? See, he didn't know that anybody saw him. Oh, y'all not getting this. He, he says, he went out the second day and he saw two Hebrews fighting. And one of the men, he said to the man who started it, he said, uh, why, why are you hitting him? And, and the man said, who, who died and made you God? Who, who, died, who died and made you God? Uh, aren't you the one that just killed the Egyptian the other day? And the Bible says that Moses got afraid. He got scared because he thought he had gotten away with it. And see, this is a very important lesson. I learned so much from this statement that I could have preached a whole sermon on, aren't you the one? Aren't you the one? You up here trying to preach to us, aren't you the one? They got a divorce? You, you up here trying to preach to us, aren't you the one that filed for bankruptcy? 
You, you trying to be my mama and tell me not to have a boyfriend? Aren't you the one that got pregnant when you were early? You, you know, because anybody who's in authority right now always has somebody who questions your past while you're trying to give present instruction. And it makes it difficult to be a leader and it makes it difficult to, to go forward because there's always somebody who saw you try to bury it. You think you got away with it and you think it's in your past and just when you think it's in your past and just when you think you can speak up, somebody said, aren't you the one? And, and this is how you know you're grown when you got a past. <laughs> And, and I, don't, I, I say that with all due respect, and I say it so that you can be excited because you don't get grown being perfect. Moses might as well just said, yes, I did it. He might as well have admitted it because the man saw him, and that's how you know you're grown. Listen, you know you're grown when you've done something you need to repent for. Everybody watching me has sinned and come short. Of the glory of God and the reason why our generation struggles so much with other generations is because everybody's trying to act like they haven't done a thing. Everybody wants to judge the Hebrew beating the Hebrew, but nobody wants to be judged about when they killed their Egyptian and buried their bones in the sand. And let me tell you, every person who judges you has a body under the ground. Every person who thumbs their nose up at you and act like they're better than you, if you dig in their life, you're going to find an Egyptian buried in the sand. If you dig in their life, this is why you don't have to be worried about people who are trying to come after you and dig up all kind of stuff on you. Because let me tell you, if somebody can dig in your life and find something, rest assured, if you dig in theirs, you can find something too. The Bible says that he put him in the sand. I learned something from this. First, I learned Listen, that this showed me that Israel was not ready to be delivered. Now, this is going to be revelation. When, when, that, when that man said, that Hebrew said, aren't you the guy who buried the man in the sand? It showed me right then that they were not ready to be delivered. Are you with me? Now, you're saying, Pastor, what do you mean? Go back to the book of Genesis. There's a man who built an ark. His name is Noah. And when Noah built the ark, the Bible says that somewhere in his life, he had gotten drunk into a stupor, and he had a son named Ham. Ham, by the way, is the father of Canaan. <laughs> this is for my Bible readers right here. Because you've always, have you ever tried to ask yourself, out of all of the places in the world, that God could have given Israel as a promised land, why did he give him Canaan? Why did the Canaanites who lived in Canaan have to give up their land for the Israelites? The reason why the Canaanites lost their land to the Israelites is because a Canaanite named Ham exposed an Israelite named Moses. And let me tell you, you always lose your house to the person you try to expose. The problem with this generation is that we try to expose everybody. And any time you expose, you lose. The Bible says he has two sons, two other sons. He has two other sons. And, and guess what they do? The Bible says that the two other sons, they put a cloak over themselves. And they walk backwards so that they would not see their father's nakedness, and they were blessed. I came to tell you that I know you got something in your life that ain't right, and I know you have something in your life that you need to repent about, and somebody else knows it too, but let me tell you, God is not sleep. God is not about exposing. Anybody who tries to expose you will lose the very thing that they're trying to gain. Be not weary in your well-doing, for God will give you a harvest if you faint not. The Canaanites lost their house to the Israelites because the Canaanite tried to expose the Israelite and God moved the Israelite right into the house of the Canaanite. Because one thing that shows you that you're grown is you know how to cover. <laughs> you know, when, when, you get, when you get somebody in your life this time and you get serious, don't just get fine. 
get cover. Don't, don't just get money. Get cover. Don't just get fair skin and, and good hair and, 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 and a great outfit and, and, and great dressing skills and, and, and great articulation and, and, and great fashion. And, yeah, all of that's fine, but get somebody that when it gets tough, they'll cover you. Hey, th- th- this is what happens right here in the text. This is how I know that they were not ready for the promised land because you know that you are grown when you learn how to cover. Shem and, and j they covered themselves. Look at this. Not, not that they just covered their father, but they also covered their eyes so they would not see their father's nakedness. And yet Ham exposes him. And because Ham is the father of Canaan, now Canaan loses his home to the Israelite because anybody who tries to expose you will lose the thing that they're trying to get. You know you're grown when somebody hurts you and you cover them. You know you're grown when somebody breaks your heart and you cover them. You know you're grown when you can go to a church and, and maybe the pastor hurt you or maybe you experience what they call church hurt, but you know you're grown and you know you're over it when you don't go to every other church talking about what happened at your last church. You know you're, you know you're grown when you get in a new relationship and you don't spend all of your time in the new relationship talking about the old relationship. You know you're grown when you're at the new job and you're not talking about the old job. You even got to cover the boss that fired you. Oh, I know y'all ain't going to say amen. Because, see, we live in this cancel culture where, where, where we just we put everything on the Internet and we blast everybody out and, and we hack into people's accounts and, and, and lock it from them and then start putting stuff up, exposing. Be careful while you're exposing. You're going to lose Canaan. We need more shems and less hams. Help me, somebody. We need people who will cover our leaders. I, we need people. And this is one thing that, that I, I keep seeing in our culture. Every time somebody says something on the Internet, we just cancel everybody. We buy their albums, but the moment they do something, they cancel. We, we love Barack Obama until he says something about a statement that's made, and then all of a sudden he doesn't represent us, and it was, he was our president even when we had a president a few months ago. But then he says something we don't agree with, and everybody cancels him. And I know that some of y'all are going to start tape, typing now, talking about, yeah, but he said this and he said that. But this generation has to learn to cover. How do you think that as many of you who don't like the current president, how do you think he got 78 million votes because he had 78 million people, despite his flaws, cover him. And today, they still, y'all ain't hearing me. You, you're, missing, you, you're missing what I'm saying. If you go read the news right now, there are some senators, in spite of the validation of the election, who are still planning in the next two or three weeks to stand up on the floor of the House and reject The results of the election, not even because they think that they're right, but because they have learned to cover the thing that has their interest. Oh, this is this is this is this is harmful for some of y'all, but it's helpful for others. I'm talking to some kids right now. You might not think that your mama has done the right thing, but you better cover her. Yeah, I know your father wasn't there, but the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 6, honor your mother and father that your days may be long. In other words, even if your father was not there, if you want to live a long time, you got to cover him. Y'all not talking to me today. You don't get to be mad forever because he didn't buy you a pair of Jordans, and you don't get to be angry for the rest of your life because he did not buy you flowers for the prom, and you don't get to be angry until you're 40 because he was not there when you were born. You are at the age right now where you say, I no longer, I refuse to be called depressed. I refuse to be called rejected. I refuse to be called less than. I refuse to be called a bastard child. I refuse to be called whatever your past used to call you. And now you got to learn to cover the very thing that hurt you. That's what this generation needs to learn. So I knew that they were not ready because they did not know how to cover Absalom, if you would have known how to cover your father, you could have been king. 
but you tried to kill them and expose them. Y'all not talking to me. I've got Bible. I can back it up even if you don't agree with it. We have a situation in the earth right now. And 2021, I know that some people are going to hurt you. Some people are going to break your heart. They're going to look over you, but I'm telling you to cover them. Back up and act like you didn't see it. You don't know what they did to me. Back up and act like you didn't see it. You don't know what they said about me on social media. Back up and act like you didn't see it. You don't know what they did. Back up. You don't know what they said. Back up and act like you didn't see it because you don't want to lose Canaan over an argument. Absalom, if you had covered your father instead of trying to replace him, you could have been king. I believe that one of the reasons that our current generation is struggling so bad is that we keep exposing our know-us. See, because if it had not been for divine protection, Noah could have been in jail. And if he was in jail, he couldn't have built the ark. And if he couldn't build the ark, couldn't have protected his family from the flood. And if he couldn't have protected his family from the flood, there could have been no animals going on the boat two by two. And if it were no animals going on the boat two by two, then that would have been the end of reproduction. If there is no reproduction then there is no you. You are alive because somebody covered Noah. No. <laughs> you are here today because somebody covered Noah. I, I know that your child's father ain't paying child support, but stop talking bad about him to your child. Cover him. I, I, Lord, this is, I know this is tough. I know this is tough. I know it's tough. I know it's hard for, for some of you all right now. I, I know this is difficult, but I'm trying to show you how to get a blessing in 2021. Yes, you did some things that are worthy of repentance, but I am giving you a word from the Lord. This has to be a season of covering. It has to be a season of covering, honoring your mother and father, touching not the anointing. And if you do that, the end of this story shows us that God is no, no shorter than his word. Because I told you that this, this thing taught me a couple things. He says, aren't you the one that just killed the Egyptian the other day? Moses was scared. And the Bible says <laughs> that when Pharaoh heard that Moses was trying or had killed one of the Hebrews, or the e Egyptians, the Bible says that Pharaoh was infuriated and he sought to kill Moses. That he sought to kill Moses. Pastor Torrance, my, I, you ever seen that emoji when your head, the head go, it just happened to me. Are you listening to me? How did Moses end up in the house of Pharaoh. The Bible says that Pharaoh perceived that a promised seed was being born, an emancipator for the Israelites, which is a type of Christ, because as Jesus was born to bring the Gentiles from under Roman rule, Moses was born to be the emancipator to bring Israel from underneath Egyptian rule. Moses is a type of Christ. And so Moses' birth was a threat to Pharaoh's livelihood. So the Bible says uh, Pharaoh put out an edict and said, go kill all of the male babies. All of them, find them, all the, kill them all. And, and when Moses' mother heard this, she went and hid him to make sure that he would not be killed. And while she was taking, uh, Pharaoh's daughter was taking a bath in the Nile River, the Bible says that she hears a baby crying because Moses' mother had hid him. And when she could no longer hide him, she hid him in the reeds and, and she grabbed him and she saw the baby and she took the baby into her father's house and said, Daddy, I found this abandoned baby down by the river. Can we keep him? And Moses is now brought into the house of Pharaoh. And the very thing he's looking to kill is in the next bedroom. He's got people 
all over Egypt looking for Israelites who just had babies and stabbing them and killing them and saying, I'm going to find you, Moses, one of these old days and doesn't even know that he bought his replacement's first bassinet. That he's around here looking to hurt and to kill the person who's a threat to his existence and does not know that he's invited his threat to the dinner table. <laughs> That's how Moses ended up in Pharaoh's house. Now, the Bible says that Pharaoh hears that Moses has just killed an Egyptian. And now, unknowingly, he's seeking to kill the same man twice. He tried to kill him in the beginning, and now he's trying to kill him again at 40. And he cannot, had he succeeded, he could not be prosecuted for the crime because there is something called double jeopardy. That when you have done or been convicted of doing one thing, then if you actually do the same thing after the conviction, you cannot be convicted again. Moses, you have just shown me something that's getting ready to deliver at least 10,000 people this week. Are you telling me that Pharaoh tried to kill you when you were a baby? Yes. And that's how you got in his house. Yes. Are you telling me that he tried to kill you again at 40? Yes. And that's how you got out his house. Yes. All right. Let me say it again. Are you telling me that, I, I just tell me, this is true, Pharaoh's daughter found you at three months and brought you into the house? Yes. And you were raised in Pharaoh's house for 40 years? Yes. And you made up your mind that you were going to leave? Yes. Did you have a plan on how you were going to go? No. All I know is at 40, I refused. All I know is I just got mad and I killed somebody. And I didn't know that all things work together. For the good of them that love the Lord. Because I knew, I knew I was doing wrong. That's why I was looking around. I thought that killing this man was going to get me in a jailhouse. I did not know killing this man was going to get me out of Pharaoh's house. And God used this bad thing and made it for my good. So you're telling me, okay, third time to try, most. You're telling me that when Pharaoh tried to kill you, that's how you got in the house. Yes. And you're trying to tell me that, that Pharaoh trying to kill you is what got you out of the house. Yes. If you're watching me, there was a glorious revelation of the Spirit, and the Lord told me to tell you something, that any time somebody's trying to kill you, one or two things are happening. Any time somebody's trying to kill you, it is because God is either using them to get you in or get you out. That's all I wanted to tell you today. Anytime somebody is trying to assassinate your character, that means that God is trying to get you in something or he's trying to get you out of something. Be not weary in your well-doing, for you will reap a harvest if you faint not. If you are under attack from the enemy right now, don't you give up. Be not dismayed. Whatever betides you, God will take care of you because anytime the devil is trying to kill you, it's because God is using him to get you in something or he is using him to get you out of something. And that's why I thank God for 2020 because it tried to kill all of us and it had it not been for 2020 trying to kill us it would have never brought us into 2021 the reason why you are here and alive and getting ready to go further is because last year tried to kill you and God used it to get you into a new year don't you be upset about what's trying to kill you because anytime something is trying to kill you God is either using it to get you into something or get you out of something. That person who has tried you in ways that you've never been tried, and you want to fight back, God told me to tell you, cover them. Wait, Reverend, what do you mean? They have made the last five years of my life a living hell. Back up and cover it, because you don't understand that God is using your Pharaoh to either get you into a space 
or to get you out of a space. Sometimes he uses the same person to get you in. And he'll turn around and use the same person to get you out. What they meant for evil, God is going to turn around for your good. And you can't be like Pharaoh because Pharaoh is telling everybody, I'm going to kill him. I'm going to kill him. I'm going to kill him. You can't be like Pharaoh. Even if you want to kill him, you got to. And can I tell you, that's how you know you've grown. That, that's how you know you're grown. How do, how do we know that David was grown? He could have killed Saul, but he went up to the mountain and says, I could have killed you, but God said, touch not my anointed and do my prophet no harm. And at that moment, now David is ready to be the king of Judah, not because of what he could do, but because of what he refused to do. You know you are ready for the next level when you refuse to do something you got a right to do. I know racism was a part of 2020, but I refuse to be racist. I know the devil tried us, but I refuse to be demonic. I got some earthly enemies, but I refuse to bow down to their level. We live in a clap back culture. We always got to clap back. We always got to post back. We always got to comment back. But you know you're grown when you can scroll past it and not be affected by it. You know you're grown when people can bring you stuff and, and that thing inside of you wants to explain and you say, I'm too grown for that. <laughs> you, you, you know you're grown. You know you're grown when you learn to cover your pharaohs. When you learn to cover your Noahs. When you learn to cover the people who dug the ditch for you. I wanted to preach this word because for most of us, 2020, we're talking about how tough we are and, 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 and how you're going into the year and, and, how, and how much different you are, but you can't say you're different and not be different. Saul, you messed with David, but he was grown. And, and I know to you he was just a child, but he was already taking care of his father's sheep. And he, he had already killed a lion and a bear. and you, you, didn't, you didn't see his development. And some of you all right now, that's what 2020 was. It was a year of development. But God told me to tell you he's about to bring balance to your life. All of what you went through last year, I hope you don't carry it over to this year. The scripture says in Psalms 27, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Bible says the Lord is the strength of my life. Whom shall I be afraid? He said when, when the evil men, when they advanced against me to devour me, to eat up my flesh, the Bible says they stumbled. And fail. That's, that's why you can't be retroactive in this year. You, if you respond too fast, you won't let them stumble and fall. If you react too quick, they won't stumble and fall. I know they've been after it a while, but they're not smarter than your God. You've got another 365 days to decide what to refuse. And I, I hope you take this the right way. But there's some stuff that you're doing that you're too grown for that. You're too grown for that. You're too grown for that. I, 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 I mean... Lord, help me. I'm, I'm ministering to somebody, but you're too grown to go to the club every weekend. Come on. I mean, I, I'm, I'm all for having a good time, but 
You too grown to be doing what you're doing. I mean, as consistently as you're doing. I'm not saying every once in a while. You too grown to have that short of a fuse. I'm ministering to all of us right now. You too grown to be that angry all the time. You too grown to still be talking about the way I was raised and you 50. What that says to me is that you haven't sought the help in between the time you were raised and the time of now to get the help you need to realize who you really are. You know, I've learned some people love their struggles more than they love people. Because as long as there is a battle to fight, as long as there's an argument to have, they could always stay pent up and angry and, and, and refuse to grow. But I want to talk to a few thousand of you and just say from me to you, as of this moment, you too grown for that. I'll be, I'll be 40 years old in July. There are some things that I'm just not doing anymore. I remember <clears throat> some of my mentors would tell me, and now you can see this when you get older, they, they, you, the older you get, they say the more blunt you get. When my grandfather died at almost 90 years old. He would say anything when he died. I mean, he had lived long enough to realize that you can't take your thoughts to the grave with you. you you're too grown not to say thank you. All you've been through, you too grown to be in church or in a worship service and not have a praise on your lips. You too grown for that. You got too many responsibilities. You got too many people depending on you. Somebody say I'm grown. You too grown to have all the proof that tithing work still saying, well, what is 10%? You too grown for that. You know what 10% is. You're too grown to be spending your bill money on purses and clothes that are going to impress people that don't even like you anyway. You're too grown for that. I saw one post that said, I'd rather have a $50 purse with $900 in it than a $900 purse with nothing in it. You're too grown to impress people. I was, I was at the store the other day and I walked through the, the magnetic thing and, and it went off as I walked through. And I had a bag in my hand and they said, take the bag back through. And I took the bag back through and, and it didn't make the noise. I said, oh, this must be a swag detector. So that's why I keep going off when I walk through it. What I'm just saying is I... That, that's, that's me being joked by making a point. It's, it's a confidence. It's not, it, it, it's a joke, but I just, I said it, and the man said to me, he said, man, you are hilarious. And, and, and we sparked up a conversation, and before you knew it, he knew that there was a Christian in the earth, and I knew that there was somebody who was seeking Jesus. It's just, it's just a certain place you get where you have to walk upright with a certain confidence that you belong to God. Things you used to say, you don't say anymore. Things that used to hurt you shouldn't hurt you anymore. You have to grow up. And maybe the first sermon of the year you wanted to hear somebody pat you on the back, but I came to tell you, you're too grown for that. Any year you decide that it is your year, that's the year that belongs to you, not the year on the calendar, because everybody said 2020 was going to be our year. And for some people it was, and some people it wasn't, and we all went through the same thing, because it's a decision. I close this by saying Moses, I could see him putting his hands in his pocket at 40. And said, I'm leaving this place 
in spite of the benefits I have to leave behind. I refuse to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter because I really know now at 40 who I really am. I am the emancipator of Israel and I can never be what I was created to be while I'm still pretending to be what I am not. As long as I'm pretending to be a son, I cannot be the emancipator. And you got a decision. Am I going to stay here with the benefits of being Pharaoh's daughter's son? Or am I going to do what Paul said and leave it all behind and choose to struggle so that I can reach my destiny? Moses decided.